customizing workflows without coding. Acumatica allows you to tailor the system without coding. There are several ways to configure workflows. The focus of this video is the State Workflow Engine. This tool empowers business process experts to update workflows without writing specs and hiring developers. The State Workflow Engine is part of a broader set of no-code tools. These tools work together to deliver robust configuration capabilities. Each screen has predefined workflows. Different workflows can be defined by type identifiers. The sales order screen has the ability to define additional workflows using subtype identifiers. Workflows include states and the transitions that logically connect the different states. Using the Visual Workflow Engine, you can add states, fields, actions, and transitions to map your business processes. To demonstrate, I'll modify sales order workflows. Out of the box, the sales order screen contains several default behaviors. These behaviors are hard-coded and serve as the starting point for no-code configuration. The system also includes several default workflows based on these behaviors. If I enable commerce and field service, then I see seven additional workflows. In this example, I will build two custom workflows based on the sales order type. To build our new online order workflow, I will insert a new state to confirm the order before publishing it to an open status for shipping. This is useful in a situation where a customer places an order online, but a salesperson must reach out to confirm the order. For the new B2B workflow, I'll add a state called invoiced to distinguish completed versus invoiced orders. This workflow is useful if my customer must confirm the order before I can prepare an invoice. Before I start customizing workflow, I create two new order types by copying the sales order type and changing the description. Now these order types behave exactly like the sales order, but we can easily change that. To begin, I create a customization project. Add the sales order screen to the customization project. Create a new workflow. In this case, I extend the SO base workflow. I create a new state called awaiting confirmation. Now I need to modify transitions. Within the initialization state, I open the transition to open and change it to my new state. If I switch to the diagram view, I can see the transition has been added, but I need to create another transition to the open state. So I drag a transition from the new state to the open state. Now I need to create an action to make this happen. While creating an action, I set the category so it appears in the proper menu and add it to the toolbar. After saving, the system adds the action to my left menu. On my state, I set the connotation to success to give it extra visibility and display it in green. If needed, I could set field values and visibility and do many more things. This was a simple customization that I will now publish and test. Now, when I create a new order of type OO, note the initial state is awaiting confirmation. Also notice that when I confirm, it moves to open. But when I put it back on hold, the confirmation step is no longer needed. But I could easily adjust my workflow to require it. Next, I'll create a B2B workflow which requires adding a new state called invoiced after the completed state. Just like before, to get started, I add the workflow and create the invoiced state. In this example, I want to move to this state automatically whenever the unbilled total of the sales order is zero. To do this, I need to create a condition to check if the unbilled balance is zero. From the workflow, I can create a transition 
and use this condition to automatically cause the transition to happen. One more wrinkle. Since multiple screens can create an invoice, we need to trigger this transition automatically using an event handler instead of an action. To do this, I select the trigger called invoice linked and use the condition we just created. Now I'll publish and test. When my customization is published, I create a BO type order and process it. When the shipment's created, the status of the sales order changes to shipping. When the shipment is confirmed, the status changes to completed. And finally, when the invoice is created, the status changes to invoiced. This quick example may not be production ready. For example, assume that I don't release the invoice and delete it. In this case, the sales order remains in a shipping state, and I cannot create another invoice unless I go to the shipment. To fix this, I can open my workflow, return to the transition, and select a new trigger called Invoice Released instead of Invoice Linked. The State Workflow Engine empowers business process experts to configure the system without writing code. As demonstrated in the last example, the same testing diligence you apply to coding must also be applied to updates made using the State Workflow Engine. For more information about Acumatica, visit our website to read documentation and view other videos.